What's going on, everyone? My name is JT. This is Lawrence. And welcome back to the Brexit. We're just about to start uh, Swiss Round 2. Um, we're going through some announcements right now for deck checks and whatnot. So, um, we're just about to start. We're excited to get you guys right back into the action as we start moving through all of the Swiss rounds for the Petit Cup. Levant, talk to me about some of the exciting things we've seen so far already. The monsters really came out to play. I mean, you know, we saw the couple of game range block. The bull was super aggressive and it paid off. It yeah. really paid off in the end. It really did. Yeah. All right, so now we're about to jump right into uh, Swiss round two. So let's go ahead and take a look at our players. All right, we've got Armand against Anthony, uh, against Henry. Henry is a local celebrity, you could say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're gonna get started. It's gonna look looks like it's gonna be pretty fun. Ice lightning versus lightning earth. A lot of lightning. Let's see if it's gonna strike once, twice, or three times. All right, they're shuffling the deck. Uh, and playing a chaos first turn. Wow, so Ooh, it looks nice. like um, Henry's gonna go ahead and pitch that seven drop Odin right into a chaos. It's always nice to see a chaos or, or a cosmos on your first hand because you know, you know you're know you not gonna have any resource contentions here. Correct, so. I mean, um, mid to late game, getting it when you have your, set, your backup set up, mm -hmm. um, you don't really love it. Uh, also, it might get stuck in your hand. Early game is just very ideal. Um, you now have a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can play. Wow, and we have Henry playing right into the new Ramza. Let's go ahead and take a look at that card. All right, uh, playing against the Sage. And Armand is looking at his hand. Oh, trying to read the Ramza. It's got a lot of abilities on that card. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at that Ramza as we bring it up for everyone to take a look at. Um, it's one of the new Opus 4 cards. Um, it's an amazing card. I mean, there's a lot of in Ramza. Uh, yeah. This one has a lot of utility to it, actually. Right, so we have uh, Armand playing his Black Mage into the stage in the first turn. Let's see how he, what he what he does when he gets into the next round. Oh, well, it's currently his turn, actually. Right, it looks like he's going to pitch Ooh, Capricious times. into a Sid Randall. Wow, okay. Okay, what that's going to negate the haste that Ramza gives out, actually. Yes, Unless exactly. you're willing to pay for it. Yeah, so it's really just going to... That Sid Randall's really going to put a bit of a damper on that Ramza, giving everybody haste. Um, Gonna oh. pitch the devout to play into a wow remedy. A remedy. Wow. So now That's we have an eight and a uh, eight and a nine k. Right, right. So, so both of these guys uh, buff each other. Yeah. Not to mention, this is really gonna stop um, Henry from playing anything from not not from his hand because he's gonna have to pay the tax. Right. Um, both Sid and Remedy are what we like to call tax collectors. Um, mm -hmm. They're they're gonna punish you with um, incremental. Um, Cost that support, need to be paid. Exactly, to attack or or to play a card. So uh, Remedy is really going to stop cards like, you know... Um, Golbez. Golbez. Gao, Leno. Gao, Leno. So he's going to go ahead and... Uh-oh. Here's the uh, first part of Al Cid. Yep. Looks like he's going to target the Al the the, the Cid. Cid Randall with the Al Cid. And follow that up he's gonna with... He's going to follow that up with... An Onion, an Onion Knight. And he's he paid for the outfit to stay. He paid for outfit to stay, to stay uh, uh, active, yeah, but he's not going to pay for the Onion Knight. Let's go ahead and take a look at that Sid Randall. It seemed to be doing a lot of work um, for Henry to, to actually move around it. All right. So in the meantime, Remedy is still up. Armand is going to have to. Is a bit of a. He's going to have to deal with that Alcid combo and that Ramza. Oh, oh Emperor. wow! The Emperor is wow. going to come out. That that's definitely going to shut down that Ramza ability. Um, he's still going to be able to activate whenever a character is forward. Is Whoa, wow, he's going to be able to the top. Wow, Remedy. that's just oh man, that is really, really hard to deal with. Um, right yeah. when you played that Emperor, you got a point of damage in, you're feeling good about it, and then that 7 drop EX burst is just going to pain Ooh, you. And the Jill, though. The Jill's good. He's going to go ahead and ping, uh, freeze two of those guys. He's going to go freeze the Ramza and the Onion Knight. Fast and powerful plays, putting dice to remember that those two will be frozen for the next turn. Also, it's still going to come in. At the Cyclops, Cyclops not, not going to do really much help right there. Oh, the Rams are coming in anyways. Going to stay frozen, and that's hitting an Onion Knight. Right. So not a lot of help on the EX burst, except for that uh, that Jill putting Armand here at three points of damage, and Henry over here only at one point of damage. All right. Let's see how it's all going to go down now. We've got two frozen forwards. And uh, I'll say it. he plays a heck. Oh, he fetches the heck out with Iridia. Right. 
Oh, he's really going to go for that save. Oh, that's going to hurt. That's really going to hurt. Everyone uh, everyone needs those backups. And with Armand only running one, that's, it's going to be a little painful. He only has three cards in his hand as well. He's really losing the board control state right now. And if he doesn't do something quick to answer either either the Alcid or the Ramza, I would actually handle the Ramza first. He's still frozen, though. True, true. Yeah. And you don't really want to kill Alstead because he's only going to come back with two more guys. Um, so, taking All a look right. at the damage file, it looks like he's going to pitch. He's going to play into another Sid Randall. All right, let's see what's going to happen gonna now. Attack? And he's attacking with Remedy. Sid Randall will, will serve as a good blocker. Wow, that would really be painful. It's another Odin. Okay. But luckily for Armando, it was That would not. have been all three Odins from his, uh, <laughs> from his deck at that point. He already fished one for playing the Chaos early on. Right, and he flipped right. the second one off the first damage. Wow, let's Henry, see what happens next. Henry's deck is just firing on all cylinders here. He's got he's he's got the heck in his hand. He's already played his Alcid combo. He's got the Ramza. He's frozen, but he's not looking at anything anything brutal here. So uh, Henry's gonna go ahead and play into the new Opus Four backup. Let's go ahead and take a look at that card right now. So everyone's a little bit uh, more familiar with a lot of these new Opus Four cards. He's debating if he's gonna. He probably should not attack with that Alcid into the Randall. He decides not to. Passes the turn. And Armand's gonna go ahead and uh, draw his cards. I don't think. Uh, is that that one? So it looks like uh, Henry's playing into it the is. Lancer, which is gonna give his um, forward's ability to have a uh, first strike until the end of the turn. He's gonna leave that. Yep. He plays the chill, freezing them the chill, again. Freezing them again. Wow. He's really need. Armand really needs to capitalize on this right now. Um, actually, he's gonna take and another. Yes. He right. He's gonna get a point of damage here. And he's going to go ahead and pass his turn, tying up the match right now at three apiece. Would you have attacked with both or just one? What do you think? I would have attacked with both, only because mm -hmm. I know I was going to get two points of damage in if he wasn't going to block. I don't... Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of it's touchy it's right there. It definitely is a decision that a yeah. player's choice. Right. right. I don't know, I, Knowing I, that the Lancer wouldn't be able to get for strike. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit pragmatic. I'm, I'm okay with that. I, yeah. Because Armand really needs to stabilize the board. And right now, you're looking at Henry with a fistful of cards and a lot and of options. Yeah, he's got the back of the go ahead and he's going to Hecaton right. that Sage like we knew he was going to. It looks like he already has another Alcin in his hand, so he can really just swing and not care if he has a if he has an onion knight or something to play with the Alcin. But if you were to swing in right now and, uh, the and he were to go through, it would go through then he would be looking at two damage on the backswing. Right. And that's okay, because that puts him at five, and yeah. if Armand attacks straight out, he's going to lose the match. So he's taking that point of damage, brings him to four. So we're at the critical point now, where when, you ha when you're looking at Fatal, wow, he brings out the Angel EV, the, Arc uh, the Archangel right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at that card. It's a really, really cool card. Um, it's kind of like Warrior of Light's little sibling. It's got a little bit of Warrior of Light, of two Warrior of Lights actually, the red right. and the uh, right. uh, and the light, uh, light card card. Um, it's a 6,000 power mm -hmm. and it would deal 2,000 extra power, uh, damage to uh, when it attacks or uh, or blocks and also it will take 2,000 less damage Right, from so characters. dropping the Archangel, the EV, is really just going to stonewall Armand right now. I don't see a way he can get through this because he still has to worry about that backswing. Um, Correct. He's going to play into a Kuja. I think he's just using it as a blocker at yeah. this point. With only one backup, that Kuja is not going to be able to use his that abilities That Archangel is going to block almost everything that's going to come at, come at her. But Sid could do the job though. Sid, Sid can do the job. Right. But to what the back swing. You don't Ooh. exactly. That backswing is looking very brutal right now. And if I was Henry, I wouldn't even block. I would just take all the damage coming in. Right, this right. He done, takes that damage, brings him up to four points of damage. And that's all right. Let's see what happens this time. Henry's turn. Looking at possibly lethal. Again, Henry is just firing all cylinders. He's got cards in his hand. He's playing very, very efficiently. He's got options. Um, he's got three backups, so every play that he makes is 
um, exponentially more efficient than Armand's cards and play, only because he has the backup line to do so. But also at this point though, the fours on Henry's side, only Arch Archangel Elf can really take out the other forwards. Right. The, the other ones that he has, only five or 6,000 power, uh -huh. will not be sufficient in order to take him down. Right, so like, if Henry were to just go ahead and full out attack, um, Armand's gonna have to block eventually because he's Correct. gonna lose the match. But, does oh, Armand see. have any, oh wow, he's gonna go ahead and attack, he's gonna enter his attack phase with the Archangel EV. Let's see what Armand does. I don't think he wants to block. Right, he's going to take that point of damage and only block when he has to block. Okay, and let's see what Henry feels like doing. He's five points of damage right now, so... He has the option of party attack. He does. He can party attack and swing through, but he has to be careful because he's also at four points of damage. He's going to go ahead and attack with the Al Cid. We know it's because he has another Al Cid in his hand. Blocking right now and losing the Al Cid isn't a good... isn't a bad plan. He's going to hopefully trade with something else. Um, he also has that Lancer to give something for a strike. Um, and <coughs> All right, looking at his options, still deciding, still in combat phase. What would you do here, Lola? Hmm, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what the Ramsat does. Does he have the ability to boost? Let's see. He could give plus 1,000 power. Exactly, and there he does. He's going to go ahead and give yeah. plus 1,000 power to there. He's going to go ahead. Oh, no. Well, no, he did. Like he did. <laughs> No, he's just going to go ahead and take the block and swing in with the Onion Knight. And we know that because he's oh, playing see. into the fact that he has another Al Cid. Correct. So uh, he's fine. He's going to go ahead and swing in mm -hmm. and see what the board state is before playing another Al Cid. He's still going to be able to ping the Remedy because it's already taken damage. So the Al Cid, um, if he has another card, he might be able to wipe the board with both depending on how this block happens now. Very interesting match to see here. Wow, Taking Henry's going to take that point of damage. I mean, Armand's going to take that point of damage. Henry's going to get away, sneak away with another point of damage here. We'll have to see what uh, Armand has in ha uh, has in mind. Henry's going to have to play something. That backswing, if Armand has any type of tempo, he, he does. Kucha, he does have. Uh, if Armand, if uh, Henry doesn't play anything else, correct. Kucha's going to win him the match right there. But it looks like. Henry's gonna go ahead and. He's gonna Alcid, you think? No? Maybe? Oh, nope. Shadow Lord. He's gonna Shadow Lord. There are no twos on the board. No, his own two, actually. Rams has two. Right. It's gonna break all the twos. Correct, breaking his own Ramza. Uh huh. Wow, what is the play here? Not quite sure. Maybe you wanted a big enough. It looks like Armand has the win here because he has Kuja. He's well, just gonna maybe, dole the Shadow Lord maybe and Henry swing has in. in mind. Let's see. Let's see what he, he, he let's see what he does here. I'm interested to see how that's gonna play out. Wow, Henry is completely doled out. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> He's gonna go ahead and Let's break that lancer. No? No, nope, he's just okay. taking a look right. at it. He is doled out. He is doled out. Let's take a look at this uh, the Shadow Lord that Henry's playing. I'm really curious as to see why he wanted to play this card as opposed to the Al Cid. Maybe he didn't have a second part to the Al Cid. Shh, this is true. Uh, the Shadow Lord is on the larger side. <coughs> Maybe he's making on his EX. That's one. That's, that's two. two. Oh, and that's just not that's enough. That's three, and it's not and enough. There you go. Armand comes Armand in. Armand comes way. back and takes it in. Yeah. It looks like that's matched. We're just waiting for the the, oh, the official judge call. To see. The official call. Um, that Shadow that's Lord right. was not a strong play there. I yeah. knowing that you have a Kuja, you're you're looking at it. Um, you're looking at it. That that was just. I think. That was a hard match to play. Uh, Perhaps uh, not a good. He yeah. If he had something, if maybe if he had the oh, the Al Cid into that, um, yeah. 
I don't think he had enough, the, the right cards to play the Al Cid. Right, he had right, right. Three backups, a Shadow Lord, and Al Cid in hand. Right. He was not able to play out the Al Cid. Right. Uh, and and the that, Shadow that Lord took out his Ramza, and the Kuja. Exactly. Uh, so that was Shadow Lord was a, after all. Huh? Exactly. That yeah. Shadow Lord was just not was not the right play because it's gonna it's gonna crack your your, your Ramza, I, I and you needed the extra extra blocker to not take fatal. I don't think he had a choice though. Really? Because, okay. the, because even if he didn't play a forward out, and he could only play Shadow Lord, right. not having the right uh, the right resources to play the Al Cid, then the Kuja would have just doled down Ramza, and at that point it would have been a similar endgame. Right. And so, so again, we're seeing a lot of this tempo play, and a lot of a lot of players, we don't see a lot of ice um, right. being played, at least in our meta, and. I think that Shadow Lord was just a misplay because it's going to take out one of your blockers, right? right? And and it's going to leave you with just a singular forward. When Ice is looking at just a singular forward, that's when they shine. That's when you got things like Snow or Shivas or like we just saw here, Kuja. Or Ghoul. Yeah, (laughs) or Ghoul. It's just going to dole you down and swing in. And he was already looking at Fatal on the board. I would have had just played the Outstead and stayed it. You could play it. No, no, you could just play the Al Cid without the combo. Not. Why? He didn't have the resources. Oh. Three was... backups, one Shadow Lord, one Al Cid. Oh, you can't right, play right. Lord, so play he, the he could, just couldn't do it. Right, so he yeah. had to play that, and there was nothing else he can do. That, uh, but but it would have been okay if he just not attacked. Correct. That would right. have been, that, that might have been one of the stronger plays at that point. Uh, I, I think the Arc Elf attacking was okay. But the problem is that she's so good as a blocker, though. She is very good as a blocker. Right, right. She would have been able to take on two of them uh, at that point. The Kuja right. would have most likely doled her down and sure. to tell on the other one. Right. So, uh, surprisingly enough, even though it looked like Lightning, uh, the Henry side had the court advantage, it turned out that he didn't. It didn't. And, and, and when you're playing against an ice player, like we saw in the Swiss round one. You really need to be meticulous about what you're doing because ice players tend to think two or three steps ahead because they have to because their guys aren't as strong, aren't as big, and they need to play that tempo to put you in what I would call a checkmate. They're, they're making, they're waiting to make you as another player make binary decisions that kind of sorts you into a way where you have no more outs. And we just saw when you don't make the right plays against an ice player you're looking at fatal almost instantly because of so many different tempo plays that they can make just like here mm-hmm. and just like here we, we noticed that henry was looking at but there's nothing else he can do if he didn't attack that would have been fine he probably would have made another round and drawn two more cards maybe played the al Cid and further stabilize the board again playing aggressive can kind of backfire sometimes like we saw here they left him with no, almost no more cards left to play and he was more or less doled out with nothing else to do correct right i mean i'm trying to think of a, about a couple of lines of play that henry had in, in it uh, available to him um i'm surprised he didn't buff the al Cid and first strike him in order to take out the I guys. was actually wondering why he didn't do that. He but left, I don't he left the Reza made a difference. Uh, activated. Yes. He left it in the activated state and not use it. I think he would have been able to give his Al Cid a thousand and then use his Lancer for first strike. Correct. And then would have made that, that change equal. Because what he needed to do was he needed to equalize the forwards on his end. He, he needs to be able to not look at Fatal on the forwards right. on the board. So if he actually attacked with Al Cid, use the Ramza ability to buff, not even the first strike, right. allow Al Cid to break to play his Al Cid later on. Right. 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 Or or I just use the Lancer to get first strike. But with the first strike, it wouldn't break and reactivate Ramza. That's true. So I think that's something right. we right. want so, to keep in so mind. So a lot of these new cards, they they just add a, a different element of play, and it's great to see how players are using it with the older cards. Um, you know, cards like Kuja like, that we saw before, cards like Snow and and whatnot. So. It's really interesting to see, and I'm glad you guys are joining us. Once again, my name is JT. And I'm Laurent. Thanks for joining us here at the Break Zone. Stay tuned as we continue our live coverage at the Petite Cup here in Los Angeles. Before we go, we want to give a huge shout out to Square Enix for throwing us an amazing event, as well as the Metaverse Instructors. It's great to see all these players, all these you know big names coming here to to kind of test the new. Uh, the, the, the new build and the new brews for Opus 4. And we're glad you're here joining it, joining us at the Break Zone while we give you live coverage. So, 
stay tuned for uh, Swiss Round 3 and we'll be back in just a bit.